what will happen if a correction is done in a believer's life okay proverbs chapter 19 verse 20 listen to advice and accept discipline and at the end of the day you will be counted among the wise if the correction is accepted by the person he will become a wise person a sin a person who is committing sin will become a wise person through the correction do you see this and next Hebrew 12.1 No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who are trained by it. Is this not encouragement? What is what the correction, what the discipline is bringing to that person? It is bringing into righteousness. What is God's expectation with us? We are supposed to grow in righteousness. We are supposed to grow in, if you grow in righteousness, you are growing in godliness. You are growing in holiness. You are growing in sanctification through correction. If you don't accept correction as part of the church, how will you grow? How will you become righteous? How will you become a wise person? There is a problem. When we try to go and correct a person, I mean, even I battle it. I am not telling while I am preaching this, I am not telling I am a perfect person. I battle the same challenge. But scriptures are our basis. Scriptures are our foundations. So, we need to learn out of the scriptures so that we apply the scriptures by reflecting ourselves, scriptures as our mirror. The, so, Hebrew, it, Hebrew 12.11 is telling, through correction, you are brought into righteousness. Through correction, you are brought to peace. When you are living in sin, do you have peace with God? You will have the, you will have the guilt of God. When you want to open the Bible, you cannot focus. When you try to pray, you cannot focus. When you try to talk to a brother who is spiritually growing, you will be having guilt. Will you have peace at the time in your heart? You will not have peace. That is how you are supposed to accept the correction. Going to the point. So, when the correction is happening, through YouTube channel, the people as part of the mega churches, as part of the TV ministries, or as part of the YouTube, or as part of the Facebook, every person is supposed to take this in a right sense. That is the biblical teaching. How will you grow in righteousness if you don't take it positively? That is what the scripture is telling. How will you have peace when you try to send people to quarrel? Why are you dividing the Christ? Is Christ divided? We have one gospel, one faith, one Lord, one triune God. Where is the division? When we are just trying, Bible is encouraging correction and when any person is trying to correct, why the people get upset? You need, you want, people want to build their own kingdom, not the kingdom of Lord. That is the reason they fear. One lakh people I have, three lakh subscribers I have. What will they think if I am getting corrected? That is the problem of people. They are building their kingdom. They are not building the kingdom of God. That is the reason they try to block the YouTube channel. They try to condemn. That is what is happening in the universal church. My purpose is, don't take this lightly. God's spirit is there within each one of us. We are the light and salt of the nation. If we become passive, if we don't stir up taking these scriptures, if we keep silent, then what business are we doing? The Lord's business. We are doing our own business. Because we want to please people. We don't want to correct people because we want to have good fellowship with them. Spend time roaming, enjoying in uh, like, you know, maybe dinners or gossiping or anything. But we don't want to correct them. Because we don't want to lose them at the cost of losing the glory of God. 
That is the life of a believer. The life of a believer is not passive Christianity. Fruit bearing Christianity is life of the believer. Jesus already came 2000 years back. He died. He rose again. He has put his spirit upon us. He has, he has identified 12 disciples. Then 120. Then 5000. The gospel is spread to all the nations. But still people are very passive. People are very passive. But God has clearly told we are the salt. If you don't give the flavor of salt to the people, how will they know the taste of God? When you keep the salt within yourself, when you keep the light within yourself, when the person is living in the darkness without understanding the gospel of Christ, if you who live by the light, if you don't show the light for the passive Christianity, what light do you have? The spirit of light where God is telling you are the light to the nation when you live a passive life. The life of a believer is not passive, my dear brothers and sisters. We need to be ignited. We need to stir up. We need to take this passionately. We need to take this very serious. God has put his burden on us. He has won his race in a relay of running. He has already completed his work. And he is waiting at the Lord's seat. And he is waiting that my children have put my spirit upon you. You run the race. I have completed the race. But there is no race here on this earth. The universal church is sleeping. Many churches are sleeping like anything. But this is the biblical teaching that we need to understand and we need to be ignited. Romans 15, 1 We who are strong ought to bear with the failing of the weak and not to please ourselves. Do you see this? As part of the church, if we have a weak brother, weak sister, we need to forgive them. We need to accept them. That is what the scripture is telling. When, when there is some loose tongue, we get offended and we give it back. You tell one thing, I'll give you ten things. Yes, today our church is very small. But what will happen when we grow, when we start physically sometime next year in Kondapur? What would be a response when someone tries to correct within this Reformation Grace Church? How will you deal with it? What, you are, what are you learning? The scripture is very telling, clearly telling, bear with one another's weakness. We need to bear one another's weaknesses. We should not try to please ourselves. There is a scripture in Matthew which says, consider others above yourself. Means, give priority and preference to others than yourself. The life of a Christian is not self-centric, but other-centric. Sometime I will take that sermon. Christian life is not self-centric, but other-centric. We are supposed to live for others, not for ourselves. But today, we live for ourselves. Not at all for God, not at all for the church. But we live for ourselves, our families, our children's. That is how we are living. Okay, next one. So Matthew 7 one says, do not judge. So our all, in, even while I learn theology, while I try to correct a lot of my uh, people in my family and friends, people showed me this scripture. See the scripture, do not judge. Matthew 7 one. But they don't read continuation. It says, don't judge based on your standards, but judge based on the standards of Lord Jesus Christ. That is the teaching. Now you see in John 7.24, the context of the judging, uh, the, uh, John writes, Stop judging by mere appearances, but instead judge correctly. In some versions, the uh, bottom line, the conclusion what John tries to tell you is, you need to judge base, based on the standards of Lord Jesus Christ. You need to judge based on the standards of the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. But the scripture never tells not to judge. We ought to judge. We saw in 1 Corinthians uh, 512 right it is what business I have to do with the outsiders are you not to judge insiders I have shown the scriptures so we are supposed to judge one another so that we bring blessing to the people's life okay and then the last section I'll take another five minutes is how should be the response of a person when he is disciplined or when he is corrected what should be the response? How a person should accept the correction? Okay? 
James 4 6 but he gives us more grace that is why scripture says God approves the proud but shows favor to those who are humble how should we respond to the correction in humility James is telling don't be proud don't get anger when someone is trying to correct you but in humility be submissive accept the correction proverbs 334 he mocks proud mockers but shows favors to the humble and oppressed so even proverbs tells the same thing we should accept the correction with humility proverbs 9 7 whoever corrects a mocker invites insults whoever rebukes the wicked incurs abuse you see here when we try to correct people right the people will mock at you with insults when we tell for the other person's good they will try to make us bad by insults and whatnot what was my intention when i try to correct someone my intention was to be a blessing in that person's life because we saw by being by correcting other person we are making the other person to be wise by correcting we are making other person to be righteous by making correction we are making the other person to be at peace by making correction we are making the other person to restore back from the sin our intention was good to help the brother caught up in sin but what is the response the other person should should not give he should not mock at you he should not insult you he should not rebuke you he should accept in humility that is the response which we are supposed to give what is proverbs 11 2 saying when pride comes then comes disgrace but with your humility comes wisdom when there is when there is humility there is wisdom wisdom tells you if you have wisdom you will understand this correction is a blessing in your life only a person who has wisdom will interpret it wisely a person who doesn't have wisdom will understand in a wrong sense why is he correcting me who is he to tell me what does he know he learned he he, he is thinking he is more than me he is thinking he is more spiritual than me that he is correcting me i am 18 years experience he is just one year two years he is telling me i i am started reading bible from my age 10 this guy starts reading bible now he is telling me that is the attitude of the people but that is not right there is no age which is coming in between when you are just trying to correct but we saw in first timothy 5 correct we need to do our elderly people with respect we need to see our younger people like our brothers and sisters considering that in love we need to do the correction but the other person is supposed to take it in wisdom in humility that is a biblical teaching those who disregard discipline despises themselves but the one who heeds the correction gains understanding if you disregard if you do not accept discipline if you do not accept correction then you are going to hurt yourself you are going to despise yourself but if you accept the correction in humility then you will gain understanding what understanding it is speaking about it is about the word of god it is about the second timothy 316 you will gain knowledge about the word of god you will grow in sanctification you will grow in holiness you will grow in godliness and then the last scripture whoever heeds discipline shows the way to life but whoever ignores correction leads others astray i hope you understand whoever heeds discipline whoever accepts discipline whoever accepts correction shows the way to life what life is this this life if i was a prosperity speaker i would have told you will be blessed financially but i being a born again believer i say this as eternal life bible always encourages scriptures through the eternal life 
So a person who, because a person who accepts discipline, accepts correction, will lead to eternal life. Because there is peace with God, because there is wisdom in that person, there is righteousness in that person, there is sanctification in that person, there is holiness in that person, there is godliness in that person. That is the reason it is leading to eternal life. But a person who tend to ignore leads not only himself but also others to astray. Means not to eternal life but to condemnation. So this is the summary of uh, the four sessions what I spoke about. I have given the context of how we are living today. Uh, because of a lot of false preaching, because of social networking, because of mega churches, because of TV, TV speakers. In all in all, there is a lot of false preaching. And if we think it is not my business to correct, then I'm sorry. Uh, we need to see as Second Peter 1st chapter verse 10 t tells us, we need to see are we the chosen person of God? Are we the elected person of God? Because we are not doing God's business. God's business is we need to discipline people, we need to correct people, we need to build the body of Christ, we need to build the local church, we need to build the universal church. That is the biblical teaching. And then I have shown the second session which speaks about what the Bible teaches about correction. And the third, how do we need to do the correction? And the fourth, what this correction brings to the person? And fifth, how the person should respond? when he is corrected. With these five principles, I will leave it here.